In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at the half-life of a radioactive substance. And you may have heard of this term before, if nothing else, and maybe from the video game franchise, but the half-life refers to the amount of time it takes for some radioactive substance to decay down to half of its original value. So I had a video about had a video about the radioactive decay law, but anyway, if we have some parent here, and this is some parent element, and it's radioactive, so its individual atoms are decaying to some daughter product. So it's decaying down, and I'll choose this to some daughter. Well, at some point, this parent will have decayed down so that only half of it remains. So I'll try to draw it about half as big. This is one half of the initial parent. And so we can find that time that it takes, uh, the half-life, for it to become half as much as it was. So if you remember, I had this in another video, the derivation of this equation. If you're not familiar, you could go back and watch it. But here is the equation for how much of the parent substance there is at any given time. N of t, it's dependent on time, so N of t equals N naught e to the negative lambda, lambda is the decay constant, times time. Now, if we want to find the time, this half-life, the amount of time it takes for the parent to decay to half of its initial value, you'll see a lot of times the symbol will be used, the half-life symbol will be t one-half. So in the equation, we'd have n of t one-half. And again, since this is the half-life, this n of t is going to equal half our initial value. Our initial value was n of zero. So now we're in naught, you may hear it called. So we'll have half of that after the half-life amount of time. So half of n of zero is one-half n of zero. And that equals, I just plugged in one half n of zero for our amount, and that equals n naught e to the negative lambda, and how much time was it? The time was the half-life time, what we put in here for our time. t sub one half. So now you can see we have n of zero on both sides of the equation, so I'll cancel those. And that leaves us with one half equals e to the negative lambda t sub one half. Now I want to solve for t of one half to get the half-life so I can take the ln of both sides to get rid of the e. So this implies, that symbol just means this implies, ln of one half equals negative lambda t or the half-life time, t one half. Okay, so now I can multiply both sides by this minus one. So then I'd get negative ln of one half equals lambda t sub one half. And if you remember the rule about natural logarithms, we can move this negative sign in front and make it an exponent here, like so. So I can rewrite that as ln of one half to the negative one. Well, one half to the negative one is just two. So I can rewrite this as ln of two. Equals lambda t of one half. And this implies t sub one half, or our half life equals ln of two over lambda, the decay constant. And if you wanted to, if you put it in a calculator, you'll find that the half-life, and rewrite that, equals 0 0.693, approximately, for the ln of 2, over lambda. I find it a lot more useful to leave it in this form whenever you're working with exponentials, because then the ln and the e will cancel if you leave it in this form. And let me give you an example, um, just something that can be a source of confusion. A lot of times 
people will think, well, since the half-life reduces this parent to one half of its initial value, then if I wait two half-lives, then it would take out all of it. Then I'd have nothing left. Well, but you have to think a second. That's not exactly the case. If you wait two half-lives, so you waited one half-life and you have half as much. If you wait another half-life, then you'll have half as much as this. So if you waited another half-life, so you did one half-life here, and now if you waited another half-life, then you'd have one-fourth the parent amount. And to show you that mathematically in our formula, we can do that. So if we had n of two, well, we'd have two half-lives, two t sub one half. That would equal, now we can rewrite that. Since we said t of one half equals, I'm going to use the ln, equals ln of two over lambda. So this would equal n of, so two times t of one half would be two times ln of two over lambda. And that would equal, now I'm plugging in for up here in this equation. I'm going to put that in for our t value for our time. So that would be n naught times e to the negative lambda times 2 ln of 2 over lambda. Well, the lambdas here would cancel in the exponent. So then we'd have n naught e to the negative 2 ln of 2. And again, remember that property for natural logarithms. I can write that negative 2 in front of the ln. We can move that to the exponent here. So then we'd have n of 2 t one half n of 2 half lives equals n naught e to the ln of 2 to the negative 2. 2 to the negative 2 is the same as writing 1 over 2 to the 2, or 1 fourth. So this would be n naught e ln of 1 fourth. And now I'm going to finally get around to canceling this e to the ln, so that I can rewrite that as n naught times 1 fourth. Just like I said, right? Or we could write that as one more commonly, one fourth n naught. So if we waited two half lives, we wouldn't have half and then zero. We'd have, to have half, then half of half, which would be one fourth. And you could also check for yourself if you did another half life, you would have then, if you did three half lives, this would mean you'd have one eighth, or one half of one fourth, one eighth of the initial amount. amount. So anyway, I hope that made sense. If not, leave a comment for me, please. Hope you learned something, and hope to see you next time. Thanks.